an amazing book in the world and its name is Likutei Moran. Likutei Moran is a very unique book. There are many books that are very beautiful and unique, but there's something special in that book that people are finding cure to the to their souls while while reading in that book and i see amazing things when i open that book and when i learn in that book rabbi nachman is writing that even a simple person that will sit in front of a book and will aim his heart to heaven means that his intentions will be pure. Just to find out more about Hashem, about the Creator, so he can see wonders by just cleaning his mind and observing, looking at the letters of the book. And Rabbeinu is saying, Rabbi Nachman, that he can see the letters coming out of the book and new combinations just coming up in front of his eyes. And it's hard for us to believe that we're really able to achieve such things. So, for what? For a righteous man like Rabbi Nachman to say something like that, that we really are able to to see such wonders that we're going to see miracles like those, that letters will rise above the, the physicality of the book and that we will see those combinations. The truth is that we are able to achieve those things. And we just don't believe in ourselves enough because we haven't tried it enough. But if a person will choose to walk in a spiritual path in his life, he will see wonders. The thing is that many, many times after we're taking a decision, we're finding that path that we chose already to be hard to continue with. And we have so many obstacles and weaknesses and foreign thoughts and despair and sadnesses. And we're giving up, and we're not continuing, keep on walking in that path that we chose. And by doing that, we're dropping the opportunity to achieve and to succeed in that path, and to complete it, and really to get to that place that we desire. The Yetzirah, the weakness of the person, the evil inclination, the sadness, the depression, all of those dark forces that are working against the person cannot really hurt him. They don't really have the access, the ability to take decisions in your life. None of them. Not the devil, not the snake, not the angel of death, not the darkness, not the evil inclination. None of those words are really can control our life in no way, except of by power of imagination. They can make us think that we're gonna fail, and then we're giving up. They can tell you you're not going to make it, and then it looks so logic to you that you're really not going to make it this time, so you're going to give up. You're afraid of your own fears, and then you yourself are taking those decisions of giving up, of not continuing, of finding another way in life, and giving up on your dreams and on your hopes. But the truth is that if you wouldn't give up, you would succeed. And I'm talking about every subject in life, even in the most physical subjects, matters of life. You want to make a lot of money, you want to buy properties, you want to develop a huge business, thousands of branches, stores around the world. That's what you want? 
if you're not going to back off, you're going to have that. And I promise to you that. The thing is that people are backing off always and giving up on their dreams always, no matter on what they're dreaming. Because you look and it looks too hard to continue and you say, okay, but look what I'm going to do, so I'm going to be satisfied with a little bit less and you're already rerouting, you're in a different path, that's it, you're a new way. Now you need to take decisions again. And you don't pay attention to the fact that someone changed your route, changed your path, changed your way. But if you will be stubborn and not going to give up, you will find your way. And it's nature of this world that everything is going after the will of the person. It looks to us as creations, as human beings, that we're limited, that we have a certain amount of power and certain amount of knowledge and, 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 and we can manage only in certain situations, but with other things we cannot. But it's only because we don't understand the real truth about how this world works. How many times in life you wanted to be in touch with a certain person, to talk to a certain person, and he just called you? Or that you thought about a certain subject, and you saw that crazy supervision in life, and that thing just came into your life. So that is the power of your soul. That is the power of your will. That is the power of the Creator that is supervising on your life. So people usually see that and they say, Wow, it's an amazing coincidence. It was a miracle that I just... Wow, I just thought about you and you just called. And, and that's where you drop the ball. But if you're not going to drop the ball, if you're going to say, Hey, something happened here and I'm not letting it go because it wasn't a regular thing. That was unique. And you keep on holding that miracle and you look for the next one, suddenly you're going to find another one. And if you're not going to give up on that method, you're going to start realizing that you're walking on clouds, that you're walking on water, that you can progress on air without eating, without drinking. Suddenly you're going to find that you find inner source of energy, of wisdom, of power to bring down salvations to the world that is not human at all. That is not depending on physicality at all. You have people, not only in Judaism, very righteous people, very holy people, that found themselves nullifying their body, committing themselves, connecting, bonding themselves to spirituality in such a strong connection that they can fly, that they can live for weeks and months with no eating, with no drinking, that they have amazing power, spiritual powers, through meditation, through yoga, through whatever. By the power of the thought, they're achieving huge things. And it's not only a secret of, of Kabbalah, of Judaism, of tradition, or whatever. People that went with their will all the way, and they become something else. And you have that power, even if you're not as genius as you think that you should be or as gifted as you think that you should because the truth is that you don't know who you are and you don't know how well connected and 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 wired you are to that source of spirituality from your inside that connection to that source of of spirituality is an inner connection that depends in the roots of your soul. It's not something that you built. It's something that is already installed inside of you. When you've been created, you've been created with two main parts. One is your physical body. That is your vehicle. That is your keyboard. With that you should work. With that you should function. And you have your source of energy that is inner. That's your soul. Now, with life, you learn about yourself, you touch yourself, you look at the mirror, you, do, you fail, you fall, you smell, you taste. You start learning about your body. So this is something that you have in your hand. 
you know how many hours you can work, you know when you're getting tired, you know what upsets you, what makes you hungry, angry, and whatever. You know about your body, a lot of information you have. But about your soul, you're very far from knowledge. Why? Because you're not looking to that direction. When you look at your flesh, at your bones, at your skin, at your figure in the mirror, you communicate with people that will have criticism and opinions about who that you are from the external aspect of your life. They will also share with you their impression about who that you are. Oh, you're tall, oh, you're short, oh, you're wise, oh, you're funny. Whatever they have to say, you're going to learn from them. But they're all just talking about your external part, about your physical body. Really, to find information about your soul, no one in the world can really tell you things about yourself, except of if you going to observe and look into your inside and find out about yourself. That's the biggest mission in the world. Most of the people that tried to do that failed doing that. And we're talking about maybe 1% of, of the people in the world that even approached, that even tried. But the ones that will not going to give up on that, on finding the roots of their souls, they will be exposed to a spring of endless powers and source of wisdom and, and, and spiritual intelligence that can change the world completely. And it's an opportunity that's been given to every person in the world. You don't need to be Hasid for that. You don't need to be a Jew. You're not supposed to be righteous or pure or holy or to have a righteous <coughs> rabbi or to be connected to whatever. This is something that you have inside of yourself and only your point of truth will expose that light. Only if you will be strong enough to recognize the truth your real emotions, your real thoughts, and to be responsible, and to be honest, and to be straight with your way of thinking, and never to give up on, on the truth, and not to, to <coughs> like, not to make discounts to yourself unless you really need them and you must rest a little bit. But to do that out of awareness and not out of laziness and compromising. Because when you compromise and you let go, so like we said before, you already changed your, your path, your way. But if the person will be motivated to succeed and to find out who he really is and what is his real, true, potential, he will achieve it. He will find out who he really is in the roots of his soul. And he's going to understand the greatness of the blessing and the gift that he received from the Creator. Because God created us all in his shape. And it's a huge question that I'm asking my students over and over and no one knows how to answer except of the ones that heard me explaining it in different classes. <laughs> How can it be that he doesn't have no shape and no body, and that we've been created in his shape? We have a shape, we have a body, and he doesn't have it, he's spiritual, and we've been created in his shape, so how can it be? To say that he is also limited in a body, we cannot say that. That's for sure wrong. We know that he is not. So how can it be that we are limited? That's the answer, that we are also not limited. The body is the power of your imagination. The body, that is your prison. But the truth is that you have that power inside of you to climb above the physical aspects of life and to become a complete, free, spiritual being. 
and to cross all of those limitations and constrictions of the physical world and to be so huge and so powerful and to make wonders and miracles in the world. There was a righteous man that I told that story many times in my classes that it was a known thing about him. His students, they heard so many wonders and miracles about their rabbi, one of the students of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh. He was traveling the world with no vehicles, with no planes, with no boats, with no cars, with no chariots. He was just jumping from one place to the other. Suddenly he would disappear. While you're sitting with him and learning in the Bet Midrash, he would tell you, oh, I need to go for a second. And after two weeks, you would hear a story that in that time, he was in another village, in another country, in another state, and he was making wonders over there, saving people, making miracles to people, changing things, getting into arguments, saving people, jumping, doing things like, what's going on with you? Where are you? Where have you been? And after five minutes, he's coming all wet with snow, and it's the middle of the summer, coming back to the Beit Midrash, and, where have you been? Oh no, no nothing. Let's let's go back to the learning. And 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 in those five minutes, he was already two weeks in in a, in a different part of the world. And what's going on with your love? And students came to him over and over again and again and asked him, "What what are you doing? How is it happening? What do you? How do you do that? How do you travel like that? How do you disappear? And how five minutes that you disappeared from one place?" And you were spending two weeks in another piece of land in the world. What's going on? And he never answered. For long, long years he was avoiding the answer. And he was saying, no, it's nonsense. It's just imagination. They're just thinking, no, it's not me. It wasn't me. Probably thought that it was me. It's not. And people have proofs for that and evidence for that. And everyone knows. And he is hiding himself, his righteousness, his spiritual powers. But one time... There was an amazing, amazing thing that happened and the students, they heard and there was a, a, a very clear proof for the fact that he went and saved a woman and her child and something wild happened over there and they came to him and, 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 and were forcing him and told him, Arab, you must tell us, how do you do that? So he told them, look, you don't, you don't leave me no choice, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Because, and that is also something for you to know, that when you meet a righteous man, so he is obligated to you much more than you imagine. He's got the power to give you wisdom in, in a way that he is forced to do it from heaven. So if you've really found some righteous man, so, so, so take as much as you can, because he must give. Don't, don't be humble when you meet a righteous man. It's not the time to be humble when you meet a righteous man. Take as much as you can from him. Force him. You, sh you should know that thing. It's a big blessing. I'm not righteous, so you don't have that problem. So the, he told his students, I'll tell you, when the Creator sees that when, when I see that there is a person in trouble, when I hear that there is a person in trouble, so I have such sorrow on not being able to help him, and I want to help him so, so much. And when Hashem sees my sorrow, He sees that I don't know what to do with myself, and, and, and I'm about to die because I, I must save him, I must protect him. And the Creator knows my intention, and He doesn't want me to suffer so bad. So he's just taking me from this place to the other to make those wonders and those miracles. And the truth is that that's how things are going and working in the world. You would think, no, probably he knows some spiritual names, he's making combinations with the letters, he's aiming the 72 names or the 42 names and he's putting them in such a way. And no, 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 no. Just Hashem in Barach, he sees his sorrow, so he's taking him and putting him in another place in the world. And that's how really things works. Maybe Hashem is using some fantastic combinations and spiritual ways, I don't know, but it's not my thing to do. Like that, to make money, to bring Parnassah. Do you know how you do that? Do you know how you make money? I mean in a legal way. No one knows how to make money. No one really knows. 
Even the ones that are working, even the ones that are investing hours and hours working, the truth is that we all saw miracles in Parnassah. So except of to believe that Hashem Ibarach, He is the one that supplies and gives, we don't have much more to do. How Hashem Ibarach going to do it this month? How Hashem going to do it next month? This is something that Hashem should know. We don't need to know that. We just need to do as much as we can to pray and to purify ourselves as much as we can and to aim our heart to Hashem and to bless with the right intention. And if you feel that there is a certain job or work you need to do, so go and do that. And you do it with all of your heart. You're happy to do whatever Hashem wants. But really, how to make money? You don't know. You can work for a whole month and then the boss will tell you, I'm sorry, I can't pay you this month. So what do you do with that? You don't have an answer. Only Hashem can help. So that's exactly how things are working in this world. That it's really all in the hands of Hashem. But we must understand that the hand of Hashem is open wide for us to, to love us, to heal us, to support us. But as long as we're not even trying, as long as we are giving up all of the time on the opportunity to bring down huge amounts of bounty, amazing, fantastic spiritual bounty to the world, we're never going to see that light. We must work on ourselves, on our will, not to give up on miracles, on huge wonders to happen for us in this world. And not to doubt that for a second. If we really believe in Hashem, if we really believe in the stories of, that are written in the Bible, we must understand that Hashem Barach, He will open the sea for you if needed. Not only for Moshe Rabbeinu. It's written in the Targum, in the translation that been translated to the Bible, that been translated by that righteous man, Unkelus, that is explaining that there, was, there were two people in the, in the camp of, of, of Israel. Their name was Nadav Avihu. Both of those people were evil people. They were bad people that caused horrible damage to our nation while we were in Egypt, in that generation. They were talking against us with Pharaoh. They were destroying us from inside. They were evil, evil, evil people. And they took a decision to stay in Egypt when we all went toward the Red Sea, Yam Suf. They decided to stay. They didn't want to go out. They said, no, we're going to stay here anyway. We don't like the, 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 that nation. We're going to stay here in Egypt. But after that, they saw the destruction of Egypt, that it was complete. And they heard about the big mess that, that, that went over there in the last plagues that happened over there. So they regret. But the camp of Israel already left Egypt and was standing in front of the Red Sea. And they regret, and they decided, you know what, we're gonna join them anyway. And they ran by themselves alone to the desert of Sinai to find Am Israel and to join them. When they came to the shore of Yamsuf, of the Red Sea, the sea was already closed. And Am Israel already passed the sea and went somewhere else. But then, Hashem Barach, He opened the sea specially for those two to join Am Yisrael. Even those two wicked people that were the tiniest, less important people in our nation. People that chose not to join our nation in our redemption day. They chose to stay in Egypt, but then they regret. They say, nah, it's boring here. We'll go party with Am Israel. For sure they're going to have much fun with Hashem in the desert. It's a desert party. Who knows what's going to happen over there. They said, you know, lightnings and, and, and thunders and Torah are going to come from there. It's a big party. It was a hell of a party. Heaven of a party. And they regret. And they decided to go. Hashem Barach opened the sea specially for them. That's against all odds. That's against our logic. We cannot understand that. But the loving kindness of the Creator to make wonders, to make miracles for people is open in an equal way for every human being. Like the Tana Debi Eliyahu, the righteous man, holy prophet Eliyahu Anavi, he 
is testifying and, and saying in his book that it doesn't matter if that person is a man or a woman, if he's a Jew or not a Jew, not a convert, even not a Jew from another nation, if that person is a slave or a free person, only corresponding to the purity of his intentions, that's how much the Divine Spirit will hover on him and he will be able to enjoy Ruach HaKodesh. Divine Spirit of Hashem means the spirit of prophecy. A regular person, a random person, even a non-Jew that walks in the world, even a slave, that he, a slave it means that he's all bothered with, 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 with his work and he doesn't have even time. To do, to do nothing for himself. He's working for his boss. He's, he's not free at all to think and to have spiritual life and to develop and to work on himself. Nothing. He's a slave. He's suffering. But if his heart is aimed to Hashem, he can become prophet. He can receive true, real prophecies. And to see the voice, to see the voice of Hashem, to know Hashem, to feel the, the presence of Hashem, to understand the essence and purpose of life. And it's a gift that is offered to every person in the world. And the only thing that is taking it away from you again and again and again is your despair, is your sadness, is the fact that you give up on your goals and on your dreams and you change your mind and you decide to take another path and to aim lower and to achieve less. But if you're not going to back off and if you will work hard on your will to aim it to the highest places of them all, you will be answered. Like that Moshe Rabbeinu been answered. He wasn't answered because he was Moshe Rabbeinu. He wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu when he was just Moses. He became to be Moshe Rabbeinu, our rabbi, the leader of our nation, after working hard for 80 first years of his life. But before of that, it was just Moses. His name was Moshe. That's it. But he worked hard, so he became Moshe Rabbeinu. Avraham Avinu, he was not Avraham Avinu. He became a father, became a father only when he was 99, 100. Only then he became, became a father. Before of that, he was Abraham, regular, Abram, that was walking from one place to the other with his truth and going and, and distributing the light of Hashem and talking and convincing people. And he was just a person that was doing his job and he wasn't a Jew. We're talking about a person that came from Ur Kasdim, that came from Aram person that came straight out of hell and decided to make a change in the world. He was not Abraham Avinu when he started. He was the son of Terach that was worshipping idols and he himself saw the idols and he grew up in his house and he was a Ben Nida when he came to the world at all and his mother never went to the mikveh and his father never learned Torah and everyone was suffering over there and it was hell. And the kingship over there of Nimrod was all corrupt. And it was deep, deep darkness of exile in those ancient days. There was no heaven over there at all. People were executed in the streets. People were dying in the streets. Nimrod was a very evil king. It was a horrible life over there. But he decided to go and to fight and to find Hashem. And after 99 years, suddenly he became to be Avraham Avinu. So you look at yourself. And you look at your face in the mirror and you hear the opinions of other people about you and you listen to those foreign thoughts of criticism and, and despair that are talking to you consistently in your mind. Look at you. Who are you? Why you think you're going to succeed? You're never going to make it. You're a failure. For sure you're going to fail again. You failed so many times before. You don't have a chance. You're worthless. You're hopeless. Look at you. You're stupid. You forgot it again. You failed again. I'm not recording you in your houses. I have the same voices in my mind. It's, we're all going through that hell. Just the only thing is that we need to fight against those voices and not to give up. And not to let them overpower on us. Just we need to recognize those negative thoughts as evil inclination, as bad thoughts, 
that are trying to take us away from the real path of truth and never to give up on our dreams. And to fight to achieve the goals that we realize that are the right goals, the right purpose of life, the real meaning of life to go in to save other people, to go in to be who that you are, to expose your real emotions and your true opinion, and to go and to be strong and to be powerful and to bring miracles and redemptions to people and cheer up people and support the poor and support the weak and help and do as much as you want and, and, and in any way that you think. Two days ago, we, in, in, in Motsi Shabbat, we were staying in a wonderful house of, of a family in, 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 in Thornhill. And it, in, it was amazing Shabbat, wonderful Shabbat. There was a person over there, a, 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 a goy, a person from Brazil, he, from Canada, his, his family from Brazil. And he finds a lot of, 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 of wisdom in, in Judaism and he finds it very interesting. And, and he came to spend Shabbat with us over there in Thornhill. And in Motsi Shabbat, suddenly that person, that is, he was quiet all Shabbat, he's, he's listening, he's very nice and polite, and everything is, 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 is calm and relaxed with him. Suddenly in Motsi Shabbat, you, out of the blue, you can't imagine, that person sits in front of the piano and starts playing like Mozart. I never saw something like that in my life. And he wore some baseball sports cap or something like that. You can never imagine in the world. And the person is playing the piano like a professional, like an amazing piano player. He came out of an orchestra and he's like, he's... We couldn't believe what we see with our own eyes. You don't know who you're talking to, who is standing in front of you. And there is so much more to it because the spiritual connection of yours with Hashem, your ability to convince Hashem to bring wonders to the world, to heal the sick and to support the weak and to help the poor and whatever, all of those things are, 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 are not available as an information for us to know about another person. And about ourselves, if we really want to know, it's also going to be a result of a long, long, long research and long investigation into the roots of our own souls to find out who we are. Because the truth is that we forgot who that we are a long time ago. When you were a child, you were very pure. You were very innocent. You loved everyone and you wanted everyone to be happy. And things happened to you with the years, with life, that turned you off that forced you, maybe, or at least like we explained until now, at least you gave up on your dreams and you decided to protect yourself and to watch over yourself yes. and using trust in Hashem, using power of prayer. You never thought about it. Ten years ago, it never crossed your mind. But now, if now Hashem is providing those kind of thoughts, if now Hashem is encouraging you with pure thoughts, with hopes, with dreams, you're not allowed to give up on those. You must walk with the supervision of the Creator and to bring down miracles to your life, to your family life, and to all of your beloved ones. And it is in our power to make wonders in the world. But we must believe in ourselves. We must. We're not allowed to give up on our dreams. We're not allowed against all odds, against all logic, against all people's opinion. You must be who the, the Creator made you to be. You must fight for that. You must fight that your voice, that your wisdom, that the treasures that God gave you, that the talents that God gave you will live a mark in this world, that you will make students, that you will change lives of people, that you're going to save souls, that you're going to make wonders in the world. And if you think, oh, it's so far away from me, I'm so busy, I'm so bothered, I'm, I'm going through so much hell, you don't know how much power you have. Because you're not trying and you're not using your power. But if you will dedicate one hour every day to find the roots of your soul, to find out who you are, and to pray, and to meditate, and to think, and to focus on your spiritual aspect, of who that you really are, you're going to see wonders. 
miracles will happen to you like that happened to me, like that happens to many, many, many of our friends and students that are walking in that path. To believe in yourself, it's to believe in Hashem. To reconnect yourself to the roots of your soul, it's to connect yourself to the Creator. And then your powers are unlimited. Because when you are connected to the source of energy, to the source of life, source of kindness, you have such powers that you can bring even complete redemption to the world. And I'm talking to you, and I know that it's hard for you to believe in that. Okay, maybe I'll try about this, maybe I'll pray about that. I see. It's okay. And maybe even it's the right way that you will start somewhere, and not dreaming so high and so far. But to give up on the things that you need, and not to pray on the things that are really required for your happiness. To achieve completion in your own life, to have purpose, meaningful life. Not to do even that is a huge mistake. And one small, mis and one small success will give you the hope and the desire to make another step and to succeed in another way. And it's going to cheer you up and give you the desire to continue and to grow. And to those ones that are so hurt and so broken and don't know what to do with their problems and with their despair, I'm telling you not only to bring salvations and light and fantastic <coughs> lights down to the world is a purpose, also to solve all of your problems and to get rid of the difficulties and to, and to have that green card to United States. I'm kidding. <laughs> Whatever you need is also a wonderful beginning, is also a huge start. People think, no, maybe I need to suffer. Maybe Hashem wants that for me. Hashem doesn't want no one of us to suffer. Hashem wants us to be healed from all of our issues. He's just humbling us to come to that place that we will open our mouths and our hearts to pray. And we just need to take those humiliations, that broken heart that we're carrying inside of ourselves, and to use it for prayer. The heart is broken. The heart is suffering. But it gives it the energy to pray. When you're all happy and satisfied and you're not like a thing, it's very hard to pray like that. But when you're sad and you're afraid and you're worried and you don't know what's going to happen, it's much easier to push yourself to pray, to count on Hashem. This is why it's written that the test for the poor people is easier than the test for the rich. Because a rich person, how are you going to find him praying for money? What, what for? He's got so much money. A person that got an amazing mm, shalom bayit, peace in his house, why that he will pray for shalom bayit? He, he, it's in his pocket. A person that got a house will never going to think Hashem on the house like a person that didn't have a house and was homeless for seven years of his life. And then when finally he got into that house, it was such a miracle. Now he's going to praise Hashem for the rest of his life. So the poverty in all of the aspects of poverty, poverty from wisdom, poverty from money, pover poverty from, from spiritual success, from good relationship, all of those kinds of poverty are bringing us to that position that we will be able to open our hearts and to talk from that humble place of our broken heart. And those will be the prayers that will be answered. So this is why we shouldn't be scared from the difficulties that we're going through in life. <coughs> to use them and to jump from those places to our success. It means that if now you think about the problem that you have in life, so instead of just being worried about that, pray for salvation on that subject. Okay, now you don't know what to do with something. Okay, so instead of feeling hopeless, just take that thing to prayer and pray for that. And if you haven't been answered, don't give up. Come again and try again to pray for that thing. 
And I guarantee you, I promise you, that all of your prayers will be answered as long as you're not going to give up on them. It might take three months. It might take three years. It doesn't matter. If you're not going to back off, you will be answered finally. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he went up to pray to Hashem Yidvarach, he went up and prayed for 40 days, and then Hashem answered him. But if Hashem wouldn't answer after 40 days, Moshe would continue to the 41 and the 42nd and 43rd. He wouldn't stop. He would continue because he had a purpose and he was not about to give up on his will. The numeral value of Moshe is one letter under the numeral value of the word Ratzon, will. Means that one level above Moshe, that's his success, <coughs> to that he is desiring to achieve one level that is higher than him, like all of us, is to want Hashem. The real success is not the result. The result is something that we will hear about only in the world to come, after 120. It's something that is not belong to this world. It's the final resort, the result that will come after finishing this lifetime. The real success of life is the thing that will give you the motivation and the desire to achieve as much as you can. To get more and more and more. On that you need to think. Not on how to get more. On to get more. As much as you can. Not to sit and plan for years. What do I want? How can I achieve it? Just to do more and more. To achieve more and more. To make another step and another step. And every moment that you have something to do with your life, you should do it. And the thing that God gave us to achieve things with, it's the power of the will. It's not to give up on your holy desire for success. To come closer to yourself, to your soul, to your spirit, to your neshama. When I started my tshuva, I was not looking for Hashem. I was not looking for the Torah. I was looking for inner quiet, for happiness, for inner peace inside of my mind, inside of my body. And that process of tshuva brought me to find out that there is Hashem in the world. You're not supposed to start with looking for Hashem or keeping the rules of the Torah. Relax with that. Try to find inner peace. When you will come to that inner peace, that relaxed mind that you will have will bring you to find out more about the world more about the world, the nature of creation, more about the Creator. We don't need to start with a peak, with the highest goals of... No. You need to look for success in your plate, in your zone, in your house, in your neighborhood, in your life, in your career, in your relationships with people. Over there you need to look for success and not to give up on your dreams. And on everything that you want to achieve, you need to pray. That's how you're going to find the inner power, the inner wisdom, the solutions of how to complete your journey, on how to become who that you want to be, on how to have the power and the hope and the will never to give up on your dreams and to achieve completion in everything that you want to achieve in life. A daily conversation with yourself. A daily conversation with your soul. A daily conversation with the Creator is the key for success. To believe in yourself, it's to believe in the Creator. To believe in the Creator, it's to believe that He loves you. An unconditional love. It means that you have hope. It means that you have the potential to succeed. So don't give up on your dreams and on your goals. And go and ask from the Creator to give you the solutions and the wisdom. And don't give up on your will. Not after two days of prayers to say it's not for me. 
Not after two years of prayers to say, no, it's not for me. Just to pray until the last moment and to be answered and to see redemptions and salvations. <coughs> Complete wonders to you and to all of your beloved ones. Amen. Can you hear that Thank you very much. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.